Every year, workplace illnesses cost thousands of workers their lives. As a regulating bureau, OSHA sets and enforces standards which provide protection for workers. One of the most hazardous substances workers are exposed to is respirable crystalline silica. Approximately 2.3 million workers are exposed to crystalline silica, and OSHA estimates about 40% of these workers are exposed to silica levels that exceed the current permissible exposure levels. This training program will look at the key points of the OSHA standard regarding respirable crystalline silica and help you protect yourself from the hazards associated with it. The content of this program includes OSHA standards. What is crystalline silica? Exposure control. Exposure assessment and compliance. Regulated areas. Respiratory protection. Housekeeping medical surveillance, and training. OSHA finalized two silica standards to protect workers from the serious risks posed by silica exposure. One standard is for general industry and one is for the construction industry. This training program is designed to assist employers and employees in understanding the dangers of crystalline silica and the requirements for meeting the OSHA regulations. OSHA has estimated these standards will save over 600 lives annually and prevent more than 900 cases of silicosis each year. Crystalline silica is a common industrial mineral found in many naturally occurring materials. It is used extensively in many industrial products and at construction sites. Quartz, the most common form of silica, is a component of sand, concrete, stone, rock, brick, and mortar. Crystalline silica is also used to make products such as glass, pottery, ceramics, bricks, concrete, and artificial stone. Occupational exposure to respirable crystalline silica can occur when cutting, sawing, drilling, and crushing of concrete, brick, ceramic tiles, rock, and stone products. Occupational exposure also occurs in operations that process or use large quantities of sand, such as foundries and the glass, pottery, and concrete products industries. Workers who inhale small crystalline silica particles are at increased risk of developing serious, often fatal, silica-related diseases. There is strong scientific evidence showing exposure to respirable crystalline silica can increase the risk for developing lung cancer, developing silicosis, an incurable and sometimes deadly lung disease, and developing other potentially debilitating respiratory diseases, such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and kidney disease. All companies that have exposure must have a written and implemented exposure control plan. Some of the required elements of the plan are a description of the tasks in the workplace that involve exposure to respirable crystalline silica, a description of the engineering controls, work practices, and the respiratory protection used to limit employee exposure to respirable crystalline silica for each task. A description of the housekeeping measures used to limit employee exposure to respirable crystalline silica. The exposure control plan must be reviewed and evaluated at least once a year and updated as necessary. The written exposure control plan must also be readily available for examination and copying upon request to each employee.
employees must not be exposed to an airborne concentration of respirable crystalline silica in excess of the permissible exposure limit, or PEL. Therefore, employers must assess workers' exposure to silica. The following steps must be taken to assess the workplace. The amount of silica workers are exposed to must be measured if it may be at or above an action level of 25 micrograms of silica per cubic meter of air, averaged over an eight-hour day. Workers must be protected from respirable crystalline silica exposure above the PEL of 50 micrograms of silica per cubic meter of air, averaged over an eight-hour day. To protect workers from exposure above the PEL, employers must first use engineering and work practice controls. These compliance methods should be used to reduce and maintain employee exposure to respirable crystalline silica at or below the PEL. Examples of some engineering controls include the wetting down of the work operations or using local exhaust ventilation to keep silica dust out of the air. Examples of work practice controls include wetting down of dust before sweeping it up or using the water flow rate recommended for a tool with water controls. When such controls are not sufficient to reduce exposure at or below the PEL, they should be used to reduce worker exposure to the lowest feasible level and supplement the controls with the use of respiratory protection. Respirators are only allowed when engineering and work practice controls cannot maintain exposures at or below the PEL. Whenever an employee's exposure to airborne concentrations of respirable crystalline silica is or can reasonably be expected to be in excess of the PEL, regulated areas must be established. Any regulated area must be demarcated from the rest of the workplace in a manner which minimizes the number of employees exposed to respirable crystalline silica within the regulated area. Signs must be posted at all entrances to regulated areas and state the following. Danger. Respirable crystalline silica may cause cancer, causes damage to lungs, wear respiratory protection in this area, authorized personnel only. Access to regulated areas must be limited to persons authorized by the employer and required by work duties to be present in the regulated area. Any person entering the area as a designated representative of employees for the purpose of exercising the right to observe monitoring procedures, such as a medical surveillance. And any person authorized by OSHA or regulations issued by them to be in a regulated area. If a respirator is required, employers must institute a respiratory protection program in accordance with OSHA Regulation 29 CFR 1910.134. Respirators do not provide the same protection as engineering and workplace controls and aren't always practical. Respirators must be selected for each worker, individually fitted and periodically refitted regularly maintained with filters and other parts replaced as necessary, and worn consistently and correctly by the employee. Respiratory protection is required where exposures exceed the PEL during periods necessary to install or implement feasible engineering and work practice controls. Where exposures exceed the PEL during tasks, such as certain maintenance and repair tasks, for which engineering and work practice controls are not feasible, and during tasks for which an employer has implemented all feasible engineering and work practice controls, and such controls are not sufficient to reduce exposures at or below the PEL, during periods when the employee is in a regulated area. Dry sweeping or dry brushing is not allowed if such activity could contribute to employee exposure unless wet sweeping, HEPA filtered vacuuming, or other methods which minimize the likelihood of exposure are not feasible. 
compressed air cannot be used to clean clothing or surfaces where such activity could contribute to employee exposure. Unless the compressed air is used in conjunction with a proper ventilation system that effectively captures the dust created by the compressed air, or no alternative method is feasible. In some situations, OSHA requires employers to provide free medical surveillance for employees. The surveillance must be conducted by a physician or other licensed health care professional, referred to as a PLHCP. The purpose of medical surveillance is to identify adverse health effects associated with respirable crystalline silica exposure to ensure appropriate actions can be taken. Determine if an employee has any condition, such as lung disease, which might make him or her more sensitive to respirable crystalline silica exposure, and determine the employee's fitness to use respirators. An initial baseline medical examination is required. The initial medical exam should consist of a medical and work history, a physical examination with special emphasis on the respiratory system, a chest x-ray, a pulmonary function test, testing for latent tuberculosis, and any other test deemed appropriate by the PLHCP. A periodic medical exam paid for by the employer is required at least every three years or more frequently if recommended by the PLHCP. Periodic medical examinations are the same as the initial examination except testing for latent tuberculosis infection is not required. Results of the medical surveillance are given to the employee and not the employer. Employers do not need medical findings because they should base employee protections on exposure levels and how well controls are working and not an employee's health. Employees need the results of medical examinations to manage their health. With the information gained from medical surveillance, workers can take actions to improve their health, such as making job choices to reduce exposure, wearing a respirator for extra protection, or making personal lifestyle or health decisions, such as quitting smoking or getting flu shots. Employers must keep records of workers' silica exposure and medical exams. OSHA's employee training requirements for respirable crystalline silica is more performance-based. Performance-based training is oriented to allow flexibility for employers to provide training as needed to ensure each employee can demonstrate the knowledge and understanding required under the rule. An example would be using the performance of fixing a respirator or using proper cleaning techniques. Employers must ensure covered employees can demonstrate knowledge and understanding of at least the following the health hazards associated with exposure to respirable crystalline silica, specific tasks in the workplace that could result in exposure to respirable crystalline silica, specific measures the employer has implemented to protect employees from exposure to respirable crystalline silica, including the engineering controls, work practices instituted, and respirators to be used and the purpose and description of the medical surveillance program. Crystalline silica has long been a concern for workers. The breathing of the dust can cause irreparable harm and long-term diseases. OSHA has instituted rules to help make you and your workplace safer. By following the guidelines set out by OSHA and your company, you should be able to protect yourself from being exposed to the hazards of crystalline silica.